All right, I've roughed out a character for three frames. And there. Now to do a little bit of organizing. Because that's always fun and definitely something artists love to do, but it's gotta be done. First time I name these layers, I'll call this one uh, Rough Rough. <laughs> and this one Rough. And I'll call that one Reference. Now, what we've got here is three keyframes, uh, which I've pointed out, which were, of course, a part of our original scribbles. And we want to identify them as such. So open up the X Sheet view, I'm going Windows. X sheet. This view mode is available for anyone who's using uh, Animate, Animate Pro, Harmony Advanced, or Harmony Premium. Uh, the only people who don't have it should be Studio or Harmony Essentials users. Uh, so this step isn't completely crucial, you can still get by without it, but they are nice switches and buttons that do make this process a little bit easier to manage. The first thing I'd like to point out is what the X sheet is. Uh, it's another version of the timeline really. Notice as I scroll up and down these, it goes down the drawings there. Uh, so it's it's vertical. Um, and every, each one of the drawings have names. Keep in mind these numbers here are not necessarily the frame number. They're the number of the order they were drawn in. Which in this case, I don't really want. So I'm gonna highlight all of these, these drawings. Right click and go to drawings, rename by frame and that'll put them in the order of their frame number. Right click up here and go X sheet view and you'll get a bunch of controls there. So the first ones we wanna mark out are the key drawings. These are of course the first one. Mark that with this K button there, CK appears. The bottom one, put a K there. And the other one that we roughed over, where is that? It's number 15, make that a K. So the key poses are things that obviously could not be an in-between. You know, they are a waypoint. So this one, for example, is when the hand is at its highest point. It is being risen before then, and then it descends after that. So that essentially makes this a key pose. Add one there on number seven. Where else have we got one? So it's at its lowest point there, start speeding up. There we go. So this one, sort of, because the hand is at its closest point to the camera before it starts moving further away again. So we'll make number 29 a key pose. And then it starts moving out. So next we wanna put in our breakdown poses. Breakdowns are things that are not quite as important as a keyframe, but still more important than an in-between. So that's something like a waypoint. Often, so say for example, your key poses for your circle are here and here, right? So naturally, your in-between is gonna be dead set in the center. What if you don't want that? What if you want your circle to be on an arc on the way? So why is this a breakdown and not a keyframe? Well, it would be if the path was gonna move like that. Does that make sense? You know, that's when it's coming to a stop and changing direction completely, rather than just being on a bit of an arc, in which case there would be breakdowns here and here before you slap in a butt ton of in-betweens in all of that. So you could say that that one is a breakdown because it's just a waypoint, it's not coming to a stop and starting again. But everything before it is its own independent movement and everything after it is its own independent movement. So I'm gonna mark it as one anyway. I don't care what anyone thinks. All right, so what would be a breakdown? Probably that one. Slap bang between two keyframes and it's arcing a bit. We might as well. What about between these two? Okay, this one probably wouldn't go directly between, but rather when it starts to speed up, which I would say is number 24. Speeds past, and then there's an arc around there, so put one at 34 as well. Okay, so now it is all labeled. If you're using something that's not Harmony 12, you won't see the labels down here on the timeline, that's a new feature. While we're here in the X-Sheet view, let's clean up this one on the left as well. So number 16, for example, needs to go one above. So click on it once and you see these kind of dots there, they're like a handle. Drag on that and you can move it up. Choose the frame we want it to be exposed to. In this case, it's two frames down. Up here on the top, there should be this button. 
which is called Fill Empty Cells. If you don't see it there, right click on the top and go to Customize. You can get to all of those options. Uh, and that will, sorry, highlight all of them. Hit that, and there you go. The line extends down, which means down on the timeline, it's now three frames there. There it is. And of course, for the last one, pick him up, put him there. I'm going to select all of those and rename them by frame as well, just while we're here. All right. So now I'm going to start filling in with empty drawings. This is essentially like we're getting all, all these pieces of paper, right, in order to draw them on. Uh, but there's nothing on them yet. We're just stacking pages and labeling them as whether or not they're important. So wherever there's a key one, just there, I'm going to click on that. And this button here is create empty drawing. So it puts, you know, like a cell in, but there's nothing there. I'm going to do that for wherever there's a key. Oh, that's, that's all of them. And of course, extend them out for the amount of time that they are viewable. I'm also going to do this for each of the breakdowns now. Okay, so that's all the frames we want to be drawing on there on the timeline. And now we can start in betweening. And this is a really fun process. What we've just done then is set up a few controllers so that we can flip between drawings that we want very quickly and easily. So as you know, if you've got uh, studio shortcuts on, A and S will scrub through your frames one at a time. However, if you hold shift and press A and S, notice that it cuts between each new drawing. Whether it's a blank one or there's a new one there, you can see how it's jumping. Now in the top toolbar area here, right click and activate both flip and onion skin. That will give you both of these toolbars here. These things interact directly with what you've labeled as keys and breakdowns. Oh, sorry, I forgot to label all of these guys. So go ahead and do that now if you haven't already, just so it mimics the other one. And on the rough, rough layer, just give this a try. Flip this switch here that says, show keyframe drawings when, and now when you hold shift and press A and S, notice that it will only move between the drawings marked in red. If you did that with just the B turned on, it only shows the blue ones. And now everything's labeled, set up, and ready to go. Which means in the next episode, all we need to think about is drawing. Thanks for coming by. I hope you got something out of it. If you got stuck somewhere or something was a bit tricky, or if you have an idea for something else you'd like to see in a video, uh, please let me know. In the meantime, you can check out some of my other stuff in those links just there. Whoa. But thanks again, and I'll see you again soon.